Welcome to another episode of 7 Minutes Medicine. Today we're going to talk about hepatorenal syndrome. So hepatorenal syndrome, or for short HRS, is acute kidney injury can happen in liver cirrhosis. Also, it can happen in severe alcoholic hepatitis, even without cirrhosis, and spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, or even severe liver injury. And it has very poor prognosis. The diagnosis of hepaturenal syndrome is very important. So it is kind of like a progressive increase in the creatinine. It's kind of gradual, not like ATN, like a significant increase of the creatinine over one night. One of the interesting things uh, you see in the urine analysis is that it has low urine sodium. It's usually less than 10 milli equivalent, but the most important thing is that this might be messed up if the patient was on diuresis. None or very minimal protein urea, generally less than half a gram per day. And you can calculate this from urine protein creatine ratio, or you can use a 24 hour collection. Also, normal urine sediment on the microscopic uh, UA, and you have to rule out other diagnoses because it is diagnosis of exclusion. There is two types of hepaturenal syndrome. There is type 1, which characterized by twofold increase in creatinine, generally more than 2.5 mg per deciliter in two weeks, and likely it's going to be oliguric AKI. Type 2 is less severe form and characterized by ascites resistant to diuretics. Most of the patients who have liver cirrhosis are on diuretics to manage ascites. So sometimes with diuretics, the patient may get diuretic induced azotemia, like increasing the BUN and creatinine, especially if they don't have peripheral edema. So to the differentiate hepatorial syndrome from diuretic induced azotemia, we stop the diuretics and we do volume expansion. And to do volume expansion, we use albumin. One gram per kilogram per day, up to 100 gram per day for two days. If there's no improvement in the renal function, this is more consistent with hepatorial syndrome. If there's improvement, then this is more likely diuretic induced azotemia. Another important part of the management of HRS is to get to know the precipitant. Because HRS, generally speaking, has a precipitant. The precipitant might be an infection, all of a sudden hypotension, GI bleeding. So always when you suspect HRS, you have to look for the precipitant and treat it because it is important as the treatment of HRS itself. So the management of HRS is twofold. First, try to help with the liver function. For example, if the patient has viral hepatitis, uh, we can uh, treat with antiviral uh, medications. If the patient has liver cirrhosis, then we can do a liver transplantation. The other part of the management is to manage the hepatorenal syndrome itself. If the patient is critically ill in the ICU settings, for example, and he has significant uh, uh, low blood pressure, then I will use norepinephrine infusion or levofed with albumin to help those patients. But if the patient is non-critically ill and they are on the floor, for example, so we have two main regimens. The first one is telepresin, 1 to 2 milligram Q4 to 6 hours plus albumin. And this regimen is not available in the United States, but it's available in many other countries. The other regimen we can use is metadrin, up to 15 milligram three times a day, plus acutide uh, subcutaneous uh, injection, 1 to 2 100 microgram three times a day, or you can use the acrotyreotide infusion 50 microgram per hour and albumin. Tips can be considered as a 
treatment modality if the above failed. Dialysis should only be used as a bridge for transplantation. So for example, if the patient has liver cirrhosis, the best step is to contact the transplant center, ASAP. Meanwhile, you can start uh, dialysis because the longer the patient on dialysis, less chance of resolution of the kidney function. Always focus on the blood pressure. So try to raise the mean arterial pressure by 10 to 15 uh, millimeter mercury ASAP, and preferably you maintain mean arterial pressure above 82. The resolution of HRS defined as creatinine less than 1.5 and the patient not on dialysis. Thank you for watching our video. Please, if you like the content, subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos.